So today I'm not going to be talking about the plumbing, I'm not even going to be getting wet unless it rains. But today I'm going to be fitting the solar system on top of the van. So this is my 315 watt solar panel. It's a 60 cell solar panel and it's bifacial. And by what I mean by bifacial, sunlight can penetrate through the solar panel itself onto the reflective underlayer, bounce back up and charge the cells from the other side as well, which would give me around about 391 watts. So on top of my van roof, it is actually red. So obviously when the sunlight penetrates through the solar panel, it's not gonna bounce back up again off that red pane. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use this PVC white sheet here and cut it to size to the panel itself and then I'm going to wrap it in a silver wrap so it gives a good reflective bounce of light back up to the solar panel itself. Now this is going to be a bit awkward, I'm trying to lift this onto the top itself, it's about 25 kilograms here. do is just lay this in the shape get it all lined up so the corners match and I can mark out the outer edge of this panel so now I've got it on top of this shape what I'm going to do now is mark out the edges because what I'll do is use this as a template on top of the roof when it comes to the mounting point. So now I've marked up the edges of this solar panel, I can get through this panel and put it in a safe place again. Try not to drop my bugger. I'll knock it. Oh. So now I'm marching out, using some tin snips, I'm going to cut out this plastic sheet. I'm going to start covering this panel with this wrap and get it stuck in place. It's really easy trying to apply this stuff. We've got the front end of this wrap coiled up at the front and the paper sheet on the back of this wrap is uncoiling itself and it's enabling me to stick this straight onto the plastic panel itself as well. Hey, look at that. I do have the bloody dog hair in it. Well, there's not much I can do about that. It's not as if you're going to see it once it's underneath the panel itself. So now I'm doing light to act, and there's a sunlight shining onto the solar panel itself. Now this is on the underside of the solar panel, so the light is shining through the solar panel onto the reflective layer underneath, which is reflecting the light back onto the solar panel itself. And this is what's given me the 391 watts if needed. If I didn't have the reflective layer underneath, it'd be 315 watts. And that's a bifacial solar panel. Thank you. 
obviously I didn't throw that plastic panel onto the roof itself. What I had to do is score off the underside of the plastic panel itself, give it a good key, cleaned off the roof of the van, and then I used some strong glue, glued the plastic panel onto the roof of the van itself. So the way I'm going to mount my solar panel on top of the roof is to use some framework, some LA framework I've got there, it's nice and light, and I intend to use a square section of framework then slot in the solar panel itself inside that square framework. Now the way I'm going to mount the framework onto the bodywork of the van itself is to drill some holes in the roof and then pop in a rib nut into the holes. Use this tool to clamp it into position. As you can see underneath it's sort of like mushrooms out so it's got a good grip of the bodywork itself. Now the next stage is I'm going to be using some 8mm bolts. So it's about 40 mil long. Using a washer, going through the framework itself. And on that side I'm going to be placing another washer and a nut. Screw that up. And another washer. And then it's going to bolt to stretch the van. But obviously, before I put the rib nut in, I'm using some non dry embedding sealant between the rib nut and the bodywork of the van itself. So, so there's going to be a sealant layer around there. And also, on the bolt itself, on the bolt cell, there's going to be non drive bed and sealant as well. So just a case of screwing that up. Take it away, that's going to be quicker. And once I put the bolt in and lock into position, because my van roof is not level, it's got uh, peaks and troughs in it, it's going to bridge them peaks and troughs and it's going to give me around about a 10mm air gap between the solar panel and the roof of the van itself. So that's how it's all going to be clamped into position. So I've got the rest of the framework mounted to the roof and now we can fit the solar panel to the framework itself. Of course I'm going to need a hand with it. So I've got my mate Spunky coming along when he turns up to give us a hand with the solar panel itself. So the way I'm going to mount this panel is I'm going to mount it flat on top of the roof but probably in the future I'm probably going to make it so I can tilt it in different angles so the underside, the silver layer underneath the panel itself could reflect more light on the underside of the solar panel itself which probably give me more realistically 100, 391 watts during the day but for now I'm just going to lay it flat, see how it goes and probably revisit adjusting the solar panel itself in the near future and here is Spunky. Black Mac! Uh -huh. Hello, sir! Right on roof rack. Man wind deflector. Windows. Have you got Whippet? Whippet? Yeah. No, uh, uh, what's it called? Greyhound and a lab. That's close enough. Close enough. The next day, Berthelini. <laughs> <laughs> right, hold on. Rest there. Go and rest there. You'll get up. It's sat on my knee. You're all right. right. Watch out for the scar when they come up. Yeah. Just get it up and sit her. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright, coming up. Alright. Yep. Yeah. I don't want to put the coming off. 
Oh, front and back, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Whoa, you alright? Yeah. You alright? Oh. <laughs> Another world. So, when I sleep, I've already grabbed all the world, didn't I? Ah. Oh. Hey Spunky, I'm just going around the perimeter edge of this solar panel making sure that the 6mm bolts that hold it onto the framework itself are tight. There's 15 bolts that hold the framework onto the roof itself and 16 bolts that hold the solar panel onto the framework, so that's 31 bolts. Why didn't you use 32? Don't ask. But it's not going to go anywhere. So obviously it's going to be a bit like a greenhouse in there due to the glass on the solar panel itself and this silver layer underneath it. So right along the edge here we have made provisions for around about 12mm holes drilled along the full length of the solar panel on each side so the air can escape. And just in the front here I have used some Sikoflex just to make sure there's a bit of a dam there, stop the wind coming up from the front end of the vehicle going underneath the solar panel itself and trying to lift the solar panel off. I have left some drainage channels in on both sides as well. Alright Marky, Come on, bud. I will real. see you ladies, thank you All very right. much. All see right. you again. Ta-da bitch, see you later. Bye. Bye. So on this junction box here itself, you can see the sloping edge is facing towards the front end of the van to allow water to spray off it, so it's not going to get into these points here. Although I've had to put another extra point here for my external lights. Hopefully that should be okay, it's nicely sealed up anyway. So on the underside of this junction box here is where the solar panel cables enter into the van itself. Now, as extra precaution, what I did was drill a large hole within the van roof itself inserted a piece of offcut of the grey water pipe I've been using recently, sealed that in, waited for a day for that sealant to dry off. Then on the underside of this junction box here, if you flip it over, you'll see four screws. Now them four screws are acting like feet, so it's proud above the roof of the van itself, so it gave a small gap on the edge. I, what I did next was, put sealant around the edge, plonked this on top making sure the cables are inserted in that tube inside there and that is good, it's not going anywhere that and it's gave a good seal around the edge. Now my next step is obviously I need to cable tie and tidy up these wires here. Now I'm going to be using the stick-on pads, I've removed the stick-on pads I'm just going to glue them straight onto the roof themselves using stick -on flex and that should keep them in place. So before I pull down the solar panel cables through the roof, I'm going to have to build a cupboard just above the sink area, just to house these cables. So there we have it, one cupboard. So let's get these cables in. So now I've drawn the cables through the roof of the van itself, I'm going to test out the polarity of it. Now obviously I'm going to have a positive and a negative, and I'm going to get these right on the charge control itself. And I've got it plugged in at the minute, and apparently I've got 37 volts coming from the solar panel itself. Now, if I had these wires the other way around, that's obviously a positive, and that is a negative wire. And if I had these the other way around, it would show up on the multimeter itself, like it is now. It would show up that I've got my wires the wrong way around. There's a, there's a negative there, negative sign, that's telling me I've got the wires the wrong way around from a most meter on the cables of the solar panel itself. So now I've worked out which one's my positive and negative cable. I'm going to have to go up top, disconnect the solar panel itself, then I can come back in here and concentrate on routing the cable work throughout this cupboard here and down to the underside of the oven area itself. Before it goes any further on the positive side, it goes up to this isolation switch first. Inside there, it's just a two pin connection. And that's just to isolate the solar panel itself, just in case I have to do any work down the bottom. Now, I've routed the cables along here, inside this cupboard, down up to the wall here, and it's drilled through the wall, and it carries on the other side, where it meets the countertop, 
then it's drilled through the wall again and comes out underneath the cooker itself. So I've now got the solar panel in its position and it's free to harvest all that wonderful sunshine we have in Hull. Yeah, right. Anyway, from the solar panel, we've got two cables and both them cables want to be going into these ports here. This is a Victron 100 volt, 30 amp charge rate solar controller, a smart controller, and I'll be mounting it on this stainless steel plate here to act just a bit like a heat sink. And once I've mounted it, I shall then sort out the cables to go into it. Thanks for starting the car. And on the other side of that bathroom wall, the cables are drawn through this hole here, then routed down to the MPPT here. The wire up to the MPPT, it's clearly marked at the bottom there. The solar panel's marked PV with a positive and a negative symbol on the MPPT itself. So from the MPPT on the battery side, which is clearly marked on the underside here with a positive and a negative symbol. On the positive side, the cable comes from the MPPT straight to this isolation switch. Now that's just to isolate the batteries themselves, so if I need to do any work on the batteries, I can just switch that off and that will isolate the batteries. Now, from the isolation switch, it goes up to this 32 amp trip switch. On the other side of the trip switch, the positive cable carries on, follows the wall edge here, all the way up there and goes to the positive terminal on the battery itself where it terminates. Same thing with the negative wire or cable should I say that follows the wall edge along the back there or p-clipped back and that just terminates to the negative terminal on the battery itself. So now I've got it all wired up I can turn the batteries on first which suddenly flashes up green then I've got a blue light that's flashing so I've got power from the batteries themselves. So I've just got to top, turn on the isolation switch for the solar panel. And I've got a solid blue light so looks like everything's working. So with the Victron MPPT it does have a Bluetooth in it which you can use an app to see what's happening with your batteries and your solar panel. So I'm just going to download this app and go through it. So this is a few days later. I've left on the solar panel and the charge controller just to charge up the batteries themselves. It's only the batteries that's really wired up to the solar panel or the charge controller itself. And if you do use the app and go in via Bluetooth, it may ask for a software update. Mine did, it, did two software updates the Bluetooth pin code is six zeros. So if you need to pair up the devices and it asks for a pin code, it is six zeros. Once it's done its software update, you can actually go into the app itself and go up to the status screen. And this is what it's showing at the minute. On my phone, it's showing the solar panel is producing eight, nine watts at the minute. That's because nothing else is running off that solar panel, it's just the batteries and because the batteries are fully charged as it says there, uh, 13.8 volts and the solar panel itself is producing reading this upside down, 37.5 volts and the present current stage of the battery charge itself is in a float stage now I can go into history, if I tap into history and this I believe shows about 30 days worth of history of the solar panel or the charge control itself and if I click onto that one because that's got the most on it yeah, again I'm reading this upside down the history on this on that day is showing me nearly seven hours of bulk charging the batteries themselves absorption rate of the batteries is one hour and 45 minutes in the darker grey box and in the medium coloured box at the top it's showing a float charge of six hours and 31 minutes so that is quite a handy little app. Battery settings, I've left it at position number two because mine is a gel deep discharge battery. I've got four of them. 
in the settings there are lead acid batteries you can change to other lithium ion batteries but like I said I left it at position 2 and mine seems to be charging and working fine okay so like I said early on in the video before I've left it flat it's a bit of an experiment this one there's nothing to gauge it against on YouTube itself but maybe in a few months time we'll probably revisit it again and see how it's going but that's all fitted my bifacial solar panel thanks for watching